Hi, this is Robert Rapier from R Squared, and this is R Squared Energy TV. Uh, I haven't done an episode in a couple of weeks, so the questions have gotten a little bit piled up. Uh, this week's episode, I deal with questions on natural gas liquids and their importance in the oil supply, and then the possibility of algae uh, use as fuel. I've gotten a new uh, headset. I think the uh, audio is going to be a much clearer on, on these uh, episodes going forward. And so uh, let's give it a whirl here. Can you talk about natural gas liquids? I know they are filling a big part of the gap between 88 million barrels per day demand and 75 million barrels per day conventional production. So are they the same as oil? And if not, what are the differences? So there are two major categories um, the, of oil production that you that you often hear. When somebody talks about oil production being 85 or 87 million barrels a day, they're really talking about all liquids production. So this is not just crude oil production. If you're somebody talking about oil production at 75 million barrels per day, what they're talking about is actual crude oil plus lease condensate. And condensate is, is uh, or natural gas liquids, uh, is uh, um, longer chain hydrocarbons that in the earth, so where natural gas is, is uh, formed and produced, they are a gas, but when they come out of the earth and are cooled off, they condense, they form liquids. And these are uh, hydrocarbons that end up going to a refinery and get uh, converted into fuel. Uh, if you think about the way your air conditioner works in, at your home, you'll see, you know, the, on the condenser, because it's cold, you'll see water dripping off of that. And so that's condensation out of the air. And the same principle applies here for natural gas. When it comes out of the ground, it has a lot of, of um, gases that are in gaseous form. And when you cool it off, they come out. And so it's things like butane and, and pentane, propane. And that is part of the supply, and that is that is included in the 75 million barrel per day uh, category. The all liquids category includes a lot of other things like refinery processing gain. When a barrel of oil goes into a refinery, the processing causes that barrel to expand a little bit, and so you may have one barrel in and 1.1 barrels out. Um, there's also biofuels included in that all liquids category. Uh, there's there's a, a number of different things that they throw in there. Now, what's important is if you have 75 million barrels a day of crude plus condensate and 85 million barrels per day of oil of, of total liquids, that 10 million barrel per day difference is not really equal to 10 million barrels a day of oil. And one of the reasons is some of this production is double counted. So if you use oil in the production of biofuels, so if you used one barrel of oil, let's say, and you produced two barrels of biofuels, you're going to count production of three barrels when you actually only got two uh, net for, for consumption. So uh, there's some double counting there, but then also the energy balance of some of these uh, forms of all liquids are pretty low. So in theory, you could have 85 million barrels that's only equivalent to 75 million barrels per day of crude production. In theory, in, in reality, there is some addition to the fuel supply, uh, some addition to oil supplies, but it's not as simple as going from 75 to 85 is not a net 10 million barrel a day addition. So second question, um, Obama was recently quoted as saying we're making new investments in the development of gas and diesel and jet fuel that's made from algae. Um, what's the latest on this? He says, believe it or not, we could replace up to 17% of the oil we import uh, with this fuel that we can grow right here in the United States. So the production of fuel from algae is technically viable, uh, but it's been known for many years. There are certain hurdles that have prevented it from really scaling up and being commercial. And one analogy I use is this. Let's say that I told you that you can have all the fuel you want for heating your home for free but the fuel is shredded up newspaper in a lake. And so you have a lake full of shredded newspaper. There's your fuel. It's free for the taking. So you would immediately say, well, that's kind of worthless. Soggy newspaper is worthless as fuel. But I say, look, we've got a process. We're going to harvest it and we're going to dry it and we're going to form it into artificial logs. I think you would intuitively understand that is not going to be very economical because it just takes a lot of energy to get that water out. I and mean, we recognize that soggy newspaper is not a very good fuel. 
Well, there's some differences in algae for sure, but it's sort of the same sort of concept where you're having to remove the biomass from a lot of water, and that's a very big obstacle. And various people have claimed that they uh, can do it, you know, cheaply, but nobody has really cracked the nut there on how to do it for, say, you know, three or four dollars a gallon, something competitive. If you look at the contracts that are being signed for fuel made from algae, you'll see that people are paying a lot of money uh, to get fuels from algae to test. So I think it's a viable long-term, um, you know, it's it's a it's a long-term possibility. I think we won't see any fuel from algae, you know, commercially unless it's heavily subsidized in, in within the next few years. But in the long term, algae certainly has some promise and could produce fuel on land that is not arable land, which is very desirable. So um, that's that's the algae story in a nutshell. It's There's a lot going on there still. I'm certain I'll get emails from people assuring me that they are on the verge of cracking this nut. I've gotten those emails for the last 10 years. And, uh, you know, the, the Department of Energy shut down this program. We, they, they funded an algae program for many years. And they shut down the program in, I think, 95 because they said, it's just there are just too many technical hurdles. This is a far off research project. So, um, you know, there, there are people commercially producing it today. Solazyme is commercially producing it, but I think their costs are, you know, above what we're paying for for crude oil, even at $100, even $100 crude oil. So uh, technically viable, still economically challenged. Um, I'm hopeful that in the future they can bring the economics down, but uh, I'm not holding my breath. So with that, that's this week's episode. I hope the audio was clear this week and I look forward to seeing you next week.